Welcome busy gamers. Today we're going to be looking at Octopath Traveler 2. If you're already familiar with my first look series, feel free to go ahead and skip straight to the gameplay or the discussion section. And if you're looking for that full review, I'm going to be putting it at the end card as soon as it's posted. So what is a first look? For me, those first few minutes of a game are crucial. They set the tone. They determine if a game is going to grab me. So for this series, I'm going to be bringing you along as I first step foot into a game, putting a timer up and playing it for just 30 minutes. As I play, I'm going to be giving you my live thoughts and reactions before giving you a short summary of the game at the end. So why was this particular game chosen? It was developed by Square Enix and it was released in February of 2023. It's the follow-up story to the 2018 release of Octopath Traveler. Octopath Traveler 2 is set in the era of Steam, industry, and technology, but unfortunately this land is being torn apart by war, plague, and poverty. As you set forth in the adventure, you're going to be taking the role of eight different travelers. Not one of eight different travelers, but all eight of them. You're going to live out their own personal stories, and you're also going to be weaving them together for a larger, more poignant purpose as they work together to help the world and the land that they live in. Now, each traveler is going to have its own unique path action, changing the way they interact with others and the environment around them, and reflecting their overall ideals and skills. I was a fan of the first game, so this was definitely something I wanted to try, but some of the negatives were there were that they didn't really weave those stories together as well as I'd like. So I am hoping they bring the travelers together in a more cohesive manner this time. So let's find out and head right into our first look. All right, off we go with our first steps here on Octopath Traveler. Uh, I have played the first one, so this is Octopath Traveler 2. I played the first one before, and I was a big fan of the Scholar, so I kind of am tempted to start here. Now with Octopath Traveler 2, you're going to have eight characters to choose from. We've got the Cleric here, which I don't personally like the look of the design of the character over there, um, so that's really my issue there kind of like the look of the thief here they kind of went for an alluring look maybe a temptress type feel um, so that's definitely interesting here but yeah you're gonna be able to select from eight different people who are gonna have their own personal stories and goals and then they're also gonna to mesh together in the end and so that's gonna be kind of interesting now the apothecary is a really good starting character and was in the other game it's kind of a jack-of-all-trades it's got some healing it's got some decent upfront damage uh, and then, let me see, this is probably the warrior. Yeah, it looks like kind of a samurai feel. I do like that. I don't really like their path action. I haven't really talked about path actions just yet. Path actions being things that can just be done uh, throughout the daytime or the nighttime, depending on the character. It's interesting that the uh, the, the picture for the dancer here is less, I would, I would call less alluring than the rogue itself. Uh, dancers are very, very great supporting characters, but I probably wouldn't choose one initially. Merchant never really was for me. Uh, let me see. So we're going to go with the rogue or the warrior here. Let's go ahead and just start with the warrior. I think the warrior is always a good starting bet. Uh, and get going. So yeah, path actions are basically going to be the way you interact with townspeople, with other characters in the environment. They're not necessarily going to have an effect on your battle. In fact, they're almost never going to have an effect on battle. They're just going to be a way you interact with your environment. They are typically thematic, right? So your merchant's going to be able to buy and sell things um, from townspeople. Uh, your warrior, for example, is going to be able to challenge them for duels. And you might be able to win things from them from those duels. I do believe uh, the rogue in the past was able to mug or to steal from people. And so that's that's a little bit different. You know, they're able to uh, to actually gain things without fighting. Uh, and then the Scholar does have one that's probably the only one that's going to be a combat type ability. And they're going to be able to analyze. So you're going to be able to give it a weakness. Uh, it's going to fight. But that's going to, it's going to be actually related to the fighting system here. It's time, my prince. We have a little bit of an opening sequence here going on. Uh, a little bit of a battle going on. And a prince is going to go out and fight, so hopefully we're going to get straight into the action here. I know your money kind of varies based on the character you play in Octopath Traveler, at least in the past ones. Some of the intros or some of the early ones uh, were very quick to go, and some of them were a little slower. 
but it does look like we're going to get into a combat pretty quickly. Uh, and we have a companion for this initial one. I would worry about yourself. My name will be remembered by history. So I'm, I'm going to guess he's a personal guard or something for me. He did call me Prince, so it's going to be kind of interesting. I like the Japanese feel of the warrior this time. I like the idea of a samurai. Uh, so battle basics, breaking your enemies, exploit your foe's weaknesses to break down their defenses. Uh, if you attack a weak point, it will take a shield away. And if you take all the shields away, they'll be stunned uh, for a turn, as well as take more damage. Uh, that, that is something that I really enjoyed in the first game in particular. I think they did a really good job at that balance in getting you to commit to attacks that would stun sometimes uh, and then save bigger, more powerful attacks for things later. Uh, so here my options are I could basically stun the other one, keeping him from attacking next turn, breaking his armor, or I could go ahead and capitalize on the fact that the other one is weak. Uh, you can also then boost your attacks... And the good thing to boosting your attacks, one, it gives an actually pretty cool way to uh, to look at yourself. You have like a Goku-esque power up here. Uh, but two, the more you power them up, if you choose a basic attack, they then do the attack multiple times. Uh, and this does actually take away shield and armor as well. I guess I'm making the assumption. I'm making the assumption from the prior games. Uh, but that, that appears unchanged here. That's probably something I honestly wouldn't have changed, so... All right, let's see where we're going here. I like the art style and everything from the background. Um, Let me see. Okay, so we're talking about the prince fighting. I don't know if these people are on my side or not. It does appear they are. Try to let it get out of the cutscenes just a bit. Yeah, so Clan Ku, he did say for the glory of Ku, so these are definitely, that's definitely somebody who's going to be on our side. Now, I will say this, uh, I started on the art conversation, and then I got a little bit distracted by the background here, by the, the, the story here. Um, a lot of times, we're, we're seeing a lot of remasters lately, and I've reviewed a couple of remasters lately, of, of old games that were basically the precursor to this today. And when you see the remastered graphics and things, they look nowhere near as good as this. And I realize this is modern times, but this is kind of where I wish our remasters were going. Uh, and that excludes things like the new Final Fantasy remaster that was that was wonderful from a graphical perspective. Uh, but the the Ogre Battle remaster, for example, could have gone a lot farther with its graphics. We still got the 8-bit pixelated graphics here. But the level of detail in the background is, is actually pretty phenomenal. The particle effects for the sand blowing around and everything is really good. I'm not saying this is, you know, high definition gaming. But it's it's a style and it's well executed in that style. It's modernly executed in that style. And that uh, the general is uh, pretty powerful, clearly. So I didn't realize that we were necessarily conquerors here. When well, it does appear that direction. Calling the Scarlet Demon, huh? I, I love the sword. I think it's uh, it's pretty impressive. And kind of an additional assassin-like character there. So he kind of let the prince go in and start things, and now he's coming in with the cleanup crew. It's a little interesting that he held himself back like that. Not necessarily a bad thing for a general to hold themselves back, but it does appear to be kind of set in the time period where generals would have been more fighting commanders than they would have been uh, to, to the back. Just kind of holding. I do like that he's clearly, he's clearly concerned about his people. Uh, where the general doesn't really seem to have that level of concern. Now, warriors typically have multiple weapons. Oh, very cool! You're getting a you're getting a second companion already. Eight minutes in, that's kind of nice. And she has a pretty cool looking spear or halberd, probably. 
Usually you don't get companions this early, so that's definitely a little bit different it's here. So I don't have two weapons. Uh, nope, this is not me. This is the Zuritsu, one of my companions. Only has the sword. I'm wondering if uh, the warrior class itself has a has a dagger and a sword. It has a pole arm and a sword, so that's going to be useful. Now we know these guys can be broken by a single sword, so we're just going to go ahead and take care of that. Wipe those up. Uh, she only has the halberd or the pole arm. So let's see. That will do one single damage here. I always find it good to just kind of find that weakness early on and then move on from there. I'm going to do a triple attack. Now the good thing is uh, it breaks him on the first attack and then it does still do the additional damage on the, on the subsequent attacks. Now he is still white, which means he is unlikely to die. I'll go ahead and take out these other soldiers, just getting them out of the way. I'm gonna hope that two does the trick and save a little bit of extra on him. Let's see if they're also weak to sword. He is, so they're probably all weak to both sword and pole arm. Um, okay, the battles have been very easy so far. We see you get a a bonus experience for breaking your enemy. Uh, the level up system appears to be pretty quick and easy early on. You know, 4 out of 10, we're moving on. Uh, we have JP, which I believe is job points. It hasn't covered any of that yet, but in the previous Octopath game, there were job points, and so you leveled separately from, from basically getting points to unlock different aspects of your character. Specializations, additional skills, additional activated abilities. Ritsu, wait! They've won. No need for further bloodshed. This seems like Hikari the Prince is going to basically be the balance to his warlord le leadership, um, and that may cause some strife or some conflict, ah, because he's definitely going to need a reason to, to leave home at the end of this, so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. So we may be heading straight into an early boss fight, so I really like the pacing of the warrior so far. Again, your money may vary, right? Like if you were to pick the scholar or somebody else, it might be slower or different. Um, but we are heading pretty quickly into a couple little battles, none that were challenging or anything. So it'll be interesting to see if this really is a boss fight. It is indeed. Um, so boss fights are almost always shown by having the, the much larger character up there um, that kind of stands out onto the battlefield. So that that's interesting. I kind of like that we're seeing that early. Let's actually see what we have for skills. So we can blind foes, we can do a sword attack three times. And that is definitely something we're gonna wanna do here, especially if they are vulnerable. Just break it. Let's get rid of their ability to do too many things. Now it looks like the enemy general is doing uh, unfortunately, some range. So we can attack everybody. Should be good. Reveal an additional weakness and do some damage to the vulnerable. Let's see what skills we got here. So we have some learned skills. Moderately powerful sword attack. And then we have warrior skills. That's interesting. So I don't know what the difference between a learned skill and a warrior skill is. Sword attack three times on random foes is odd. Versus an extra powerful single sword attack. Probably belaboring the point too much here. There's no real reason to do a whole lot with this. I think we just break this additional sword. Now he is red. So let's see if we have... Let's see if we have... Oh, that is pull arm. Honestly, we're going to do the random one, because I think if we strike the one that's already stunned, we'll go ahead and kill him. Uh, but we, we still managed to stun our additional target, and that's that's the main thing we cared about here. We're now going to go ahead and stun the main guy. Um, yep, we're going to stun the main guy, because he's going to go next. Removing him from the turn. Uh, let's go ahead and... We should level up after this, so let's go ahead and take out those guys with a sweep. 
Prepare yourself. And then let's just kind of unload on the leader here. He is still white, which means that he is definitely not going to be. How's this? He's definitely not going to be going down anytime soon. 280 damage on him. He is red now. Okay, so he's he's still relatively easy. Let's, we'll do all four, and we've got our first boss down. So that was maybe a little bit less of a puzzle than I had expected. Um, we were able to breeze through that first boss pretty well, but we're only 13 minutes into the game, so it's not like I need to be pushing for anything too crazy. Uh, we got a bonus for overkill this time instead of just for break. Now, I don't know if those bonuses are ultimately that relevant. You see I get 16 experience for beating this person. I only get two additional experience. Percentage-wise, that matters, and it'll add up over time. Uh, but I'm going to guess, you know, we're going to be getting 40, 50, 60 experience for killing things in later levels. And if that bonus doesn't also go up, it's probably going to be irrelevant. So it's going to be something to note. It's over. No. Talk to the enemy general a little bit. They won't. The accursed clan. Ah, so they think we're an accursed clan. And there's the general. Oh, all right. I had already beaten him. He's just going to come in and cut him down. So we definitely have an opposition in views Soft -hearted. between the prince and his older brother, which I don't think I'd made that connection initially. Show sympathy to the enemy and you tarnish the name. Maybe we've got kind of a Genghis Khan feel to this. Enemy general is slain. Okay, so we win. That's that's good, though I'm guessing my character does not feel that way. At least not completely. Your Majesty. There will be dad. Today's glory was paid for with the But victory is ever an occasion. I mean, if you're going to war, you're definitely celebrating victory. Our enemies have been put to heel. Their forces crushed under our might. I don't remember if they explained why we were taking over this particular desert. Your Majesty. Hikari. I... So the dad is probably going to fall ill, uh, leaving the brothers in charge here. Or maybe even pass away. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to predict what's going to go on here Brother, in the story too early. What is the enemy general speaking of? Is it true? I mean, your enemies are always going to think you're evil. It doesn't mean that we are uh, good, but just because an enemy says that you're evil doesn't make that true. General Mugen, it was your sword that cut the path to victory. Oh wow! What a what a maybe a betrayal from my friend. Ritsu Mishuyo, my lord. Compassion has no place in Kuhi. I'm mildly surprised by that, just because that guy fought beside me the whole time. Yeah, a little bit of a loading screen. We'll kind of go up to the overlook that we started at. Your brother's wrong, you know. We wouldn't have made it to the enemy general without you. Okay, so he was just being more political. He's still giving me credit here, you don't need to which me. does make sense. Didn't do it How long have we known each other? And not once have I bested you at sword. So they're definitely friends. You may be the prince, I, but it was by dint of strength that you were made captain. It's all a lowborn urchin like me could hope for to simply be allowed in your presence. I mean, I I was called a, a half blood, so it's not You're as if I'm quite that side. important. And probably the expendable so? brother for sure. I'll try to keep up then. You... These are probably the close day, friends. The battle was long and trying. The background is a bit fuzzed in this one, but it is still kind of pretty in a sunset way. Music, tonal, interesting, but not uh, intrusive. 
It was an honor to have you. Not special here, either, but not intrusive. House May is the spear of Kuh. We are. I'm not a fan of, you know, houses, people, or whatever, just saying, hey, we're the we're the spear, we're a tool. It's uh, a little bit of game tropey, but uh, not how I feel about those. A mage friend, maybe? Or a strategist? Of course, Kazan. Without your cunning yeah, strategist. We may have very well been buried. Victory is the sweetest libation. Or so they say. I wait. We can't toast yet. He's doing the after battle celebration here. The road ahead will be long and fraught with battle. Drinks will have to wait. So I did see that there's a speed up feature. So you kind of see that popping up to the bottom. Uh, I'm kind of curious uh, because I do feel like it's advancing just a bit slow for me. Um, I'm I'm able to read through it, but I feel like it's not quite moving as fast as I want it to. Uh, so we'll put it in speed up, and just kind of see what the pacing is in in the, the sped up version. Never have a chance to fulfill that promise. Nation of Ku claiming victory, declared indefinite end to hostilities, fires of warfare. Okay, everybody went their separate way, but no conflict. That actually seems the positive that we would hope for. I know that's not what they had talked about and what they planned for, but overall, that's a positive. The town is very pretty, very interesting. And so at this stage now, I'm just kind of training. And doing uh, some sword sparring and examples here. So the speed up feature is strongly fast. Uh, I can barely read those as quickly as they are flashing um, up on the screen. It's talking to lowborn folk. He clearly is someone who cares about them and wants to be uh, one of their people, but but his people definitely see him as above them. So there's there's still that split. Basically, we're establishing him as the kind man of the people brother versus his brother as the the warlord, the violent one. I'm going to guess our... Oh, nope. A brawl in the tavern against my brother's men. Okay, so we've got Radar just basically telling us where our next quest is. Save points, side stories. Hidden items. It marks hidden items. That's interesting. Okay, so we can kind of move around here. We move pretty quickly, which is nice. Horses are gentle and sensitive items for animals. Got some shops. None of those are particularly useful to me just yet. Okay, so we are saying the tavern is here. I visit the other shop first because I have compulsions. And I need to see if there's, you know, an interesting weapon or something. So this would increase my abilities, uh, and I could afford the Nameless Sword, which would increase my abilities quite a lot. It's hard to say. Things like that are rarely overly useful this early, um, but there is a distinct amount of equipment that we can already buy here. We can get armor, helmets, we can get earrings with speed and additional attack. Like you can get a lot of equipment here. I'm kind of surprised a lot of that's available and you have 2,800 gold to start with. So uh, you can definitely get quite a few of these things here. Uh, the leather helm, the fur armor, cheap 600 to have a fair amount of stats boosted. Uh, or you could basically just get a very nice sword, bumping your damage significantly. Uh, for me, I think I will probably be on the shield, though. We end up getting something. But for now, let's go ahead and move on. It's nice to have seen what we have in the shop and available to us early. Let's go ahead and break up this brawl. Running lower on our 30 minutes already. We have 8 through 22, 23 minutes. Okay, so at that speed, I cannot read and... And talk about it, which is maybe too much. 
I like that there's a speed so up feature. I wish it was about half as fast or that there were multiple the settings, meaning that there was a uh, fast, faster, and super it's fast, something of that nature. Lives. Suppose that's what happens when your family forsake. You've got some nerve. So there's clearly been more of a split between me and my brother in the last couple of years. Not that it looked like we were ever close. <laughs> the king grows it won't be long and it's clearly a warlike culture talked about lifting your sword as the king you would never expect a so king to fight really but at the same time um, the name of the that having king. status in a samurai type society makes I makes a lot of sense to me enough. okay so we're going to we're going to do the example of the path actions that we were talking about you can challenge people to a duel during the day. You just have to go over and use your path action. I would assume duels will probably take place in the exact same way that a real battle would. Uh, he has a learn skill of double slash. He has a reasonable strength. Let's go ahead and challenge him to a duel. We'll see how challenging this is. Uh, he just has a single star, so it's probably going to be easy. Now be prepared for the consequences. On your guard. My turn. I mean, he is at least being represented uh, by a real blade. Let's go ahead and stun him really quickly here. Prepare and likely yourself. then follow up, up with some form of a learn skill. Let's say, let's do the pole arm attack and My see if we can get a crit. So yeah, we, we stun and make a single attack and, and that duel is over. It was probably intended to be easy. Now you did get a bonus money for not getting hit at all. That's a new bonus that we hadn't seen before. So it's interesting to see. But we did get experience from that just as if we were grinding out levels somewhere or, or doing other battles somewhere. And we got job points as well. So it did, it did indeed work just like any other battle. It's just basically a non-lethal version that you can do in towns it seems like. Now, leave. It also did look like I could challenge these other town people to a duel. I don't believe that's something I would want to do, but still. Or I can learn, learn new skills by winning challenges. You can set up to five skills in available slots. Use them at any time. Interesting. So if I duel somebody that has a skill... I can then steal that skill or learn that skill That's from them. Lord. That's definitely interesting. I do like that. And it also gives a different mechanic Apologies for wanting to, to fight Drink in peace. Uh, random people in the town. They might have a unique skill or an interesting skill that you'd want to exploit or adjust your character Morgy build with. You needn't thank me. So that definitely adds that some complexity and some town. interesting layers to the warrior. There's been more smiles I don't remember if that was a since. thing in the past game, but regardless, I do like it as an overall. Oh, it's been too long, Your Highness. Not the face I recognize. Ben K. I can't remember the last time you visited. Is something amiss? Ugh. My prince, I must ask that you visit me at the Western Keep. Okay. All will be explained upon. Seems like Very there's well. a bit of trouble, even though there's some peace Thank here. Thank you, my prince. I still continue to expect uh, the father to pass away and that control to pass, and that kind of being the impetus uh, for me leaving or being uh, ejected from town. As much as I don't want that necessarily to be the case, I feel like that is the direction we're going. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and buy a few things here. Let's just buy... Start out by buying the Sprightly Earring. It's definitely something we're going to need. It makes us faster. So we've got a, bit, a bonus, but there's not a... There's not something better. Uh, there is technically something better. The Talisman... That just gives you additional physical strength. 
So I would say those are comparable in a different way. The fur armor is also not something that there is a better version of. So we're just going to go ahead and take those two things as early upgrades. Keeping in mind that we can still afford the long spear if needed or the bronze helm, the nicer version of those two things. Do that now. And then we'll wander around just a bit. Seeing what we... If there's any like little chests or anything hidden. Okay, so if there appears, we can take canoes across the water, and it just automatically puts me into a boat. That's definitely interesting. Must make for the Western Keep. Okay, so it's just a, a thing that I can't really engage with now, because uh, I don't see anything out in the water. But it is definitely interesting to see that you can just basically embark at any time. I was hoping that some of the townsfolk could say multiple things. You can duel basically just anyone. So we see a learned skill of spearhead there. I do wish, and I, I don't see how I would do that. I wish that I could see exactly what that learned skill did. Because each of them have one. Uh, that one has a piercing arrow skill and is much stronger. That's probably not going to be useful to me because I would assume that I cannot wield a bow. Uh, but if I can, then it gives you some variety. But again, I wish it would tell me a bit more about the skills, rather than just what weapon it is if I'm learning them. So at this stage, we actually are at 29 minutes and 45 seconds, or 48 seconds now. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit the pause button. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and organize my thoughts just a bit, and then give you the final thoughts on this one. All right, so final thoughts for my first 30 minutes. I will say that the things that I thought were good were the art style. I like the art style. Um, I think it fits this aesthetic. I don't want to say art style too generically. I think in this particular scenario, it hits the classic old school feel with a new updated modern environment very, very well. You still have your two dimensional character models. However, you've got a three-dimensional environment and everything is pulled off very well. It looks clean. The lighting effects are fun. You've got shadows moving across things. Overall, I think it's done very well. Could it have better graphics? Sure, but that would make it a completely different game. I also think that the combat system is done pretty well. We've only seen a couple of battles so far, so it's going to be hard to tell ultimately. But just like the original Octopath Traveler, it has the break system in which you are trying to find weaknesses to break the armor to get more damage done. And you are trying to balance using your power-ups early to get multiple attacks to break that armor faster or stun your enemy. Or, you know, plinking them down with their armor to stun them to then unleash all of that power while they're weak. I think that's really good. I think that's going to be even more important when you do add people like the Scholar in because the Scholar has very weak physical attacks, and so capitalizing on that limited amount of mana that they can use before they become useless to the party necessarily, or in some ways, is a fun little puzzle. Uh, everything so far has been pretty easy, and so it's easing you into the game. That's going to make it accessible to most people. I felt like the pacing was pretty good for the first 30 minutes. I got into several little battles. There was some story, but it didn't belabor itself too much. Uh, things are bad, though. I will say, overall, I felt like the advancement of the story, the advancement of the speech and everything was just a bit too slow for me. I wanted it to be sped up. I liked that there was the ability to speed it up, but I felt like that speed up was too fast, so it basically went from too slow to too fast all at once. There was nothing in between, and I really wish there was something in between. I also felt like the story overall was lackluster and predictable. It's definitely something that I've seen a hundred times. At least it seems to be shaping up to something I've seen a hundred times. Now, that's just the individual story, not the overarching story for the game, because clearly we haven't gotten to that yet. But this particular character does have a bit of a story that seems like it's going to be too on the nose for me. And so that's definitely a negative to it as well. Now... That is the end of my first look. That's where we're going to stop for today. I hope you really enjoyed this content and have a great time gaming. Until next time, I'll see you later.